In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at graphing the reciprocal function. So what we're going to look at here is, um, let's take a look at the first example here. We have a function, let's say you have a linear function, and we want to be able to graph its reciprocal, i.e. 1 over 2 minus x. We want to use the observations and uh, characteristics of this function uh, to be able to decide what the reciprocal function would look like. So let's go ahead and take a look at what y equals 2 minus x looks like. So looking at y equals 2 minus x here, you see we have a quick sketch uh, of the graph here. Um, now what we want to do is make so the following observations. First of all, let's identify the root and y-intercept of y equals 2 minus x. Well, this function has a root at 2, and it has a y-intercept at 2. Now, if you go to analyze the graph of 1 over 2 minus x, what was once a root now becomes a point of discontinuity, as you can see here. This point of discontinuity is also known as a vertical asymptote. To express a vertical asymptote, we generally draw a vertical line dashed. And in this case here, like we were talking about, this vertical asymptote exists at x equals to 2. So again, just to reiterate this, we have a function that has a root at 2. Its reciprocal function would now be a point of discontinuity and would create a vertical asymptote at 2. Likewise, if I go to analyze the graph here, we know that we have a y-intercept at 2. Therefore, its reciprocal will have a y-intercept at a half. Again, if you flip the value of 2, it gives you a half. So now we have a reciprocal function that has a vertical asymptote at 2 and has a y-intercept of a half. Now, what happens as we approach this vertical asymptote? Well, you can see here that your function f at x is a decreasing function. As I read this graph from left to right, you can see it's going downwards, it's decreasing. Therefore, the reciprocal function will be an increasing function. To see this, let's look at the following table. As discussed here, we can see that our function f at x is decreasing, and we want to examine what happens to our reciprocal function as we approach our vertical asymptote, i.e. x equals 2 line, from the left-hand side. So again, as f at x is approaching our vertical asymptote, what is our reciprocal function g at x going to look like? And you can see if we go to our table here, if I let x be negative 100, f at x is going to be 102. If I let x be negative 10, f at negative 10 will be 12. And lastly, f at negative 1 will yield a 3. Therefore, the reciprocal function will be the flip of these. So we will have 1 over 102, 1 over 12, and 1 over 3. So you can see here clearly that your function f at x is a decreasing function, and your function g at x is now getting larger. So graphically, what's going to happen here, as x gets closer and closer and closer to the value of 2, our function g at x will become closer and closer and closer to positive infinity. To see this, examine some more extreme points on a table. Extending our table here and looking at points that approach closer to the value of 2, we can see here that our reciprocal function is getting larger and larger and larger and approaching infinity. So as we approach 2 from the left-hand side, our reciprocal function will now approach infinity. Graphically, this will look as follows. And you can see here we now have our reciprocal function again. And as f at x approaches 2 from the left-hand side, our function is decreasing. Therefore, our reciprocal function is increasing. Um, as we approach the vertical asymptote and we're approaching smaller and smaller values for our function f at x, the reciprocal function will then approach positive infinity. And likewise, going in the opposite direction, as our function f at x is approaching positive infinity, the reciprocal function will be approaching 0. Now let's examine the graph as we approach 2 from the right-hand side. Again, examining the graph here, we can see that my function g at x, the reciprocal function, is approaching negative infinity as we get closer and closer to our vertical asymptote. So again, the function will look as follows. So as discussed here, again, our function f at x is a decreasing function. Therefore, the reciprocal function will be an increasing function. Again, as you read this from left to right, you can see your function is increasing, getting larger and larger and larger. As I approach the vertical asymptote f at x, we can see we're approaching a value of 0. Therefore, the reciprocal function will approach positive infinity. As my function f at x approaches 2 from the right-hand side, we can see we're approaching 0 below the x-axis. Therefore, a very, very small negative number. Therefore, the reciprocal function will be approaching negative infinity. We can now do some further analysis on the graph of g at x and f at x. First of all, we can find out where these two functions intersect. These two functions intersect here, 
And here, to find what values these intersect at, we just have to set the function f at x equal to g at x. Doing so, we get, I end up getting that the function f at x and g at x intersect when x is 3 and 1. Find the corresponding y values, we have our following points. Therefore, the function f at x and g at x intersect at 3, 1, and 1, 1. Summarizing this in a table here, notice that the, the domain of our function f at x was all real numbers, and whereas the domain of our reciprocal function was, again, all real numbers excluding uh, 2. The range of our original function f at x was all real numbers, and the range of our reciprocal function was all real numbers excluding 0. Again, we have a horizontal asymptote here at 0. Intervals of increase, we could see that our function f at x was increasing nowhere, it was continuously decreasing function whereas the reciprocal function was increasing everywhere on its domain. And likewise, the function f of x was decreasing the entire uh, domain of it, and whereas the reciprocal function was never decreasing on its domain. All right, let's take a look at another example. In the next example here, now we're going to look at graphing the reciprocal of a quadratic function. So let's first take a look at what 9 minus x squared looks like. A uh, quick sketch of 9 minus x squared, you can see here we have a quadratic opening downwards, we have roots at plus or minus 3, and a y-intercept at uh, 9 here. So what happens is when you go to graph your reciprocal function, what was once roots now become vertical asymptotes. So therefore we have a root at 3 and a root at negative 3, we now have vertical asymptotes at those values. So you can see here we've drawn in our vertical asymptotes for our reciprocal function g at x. We also have a y-intercept at 0, 9, so therefore the reciprocal function will have a y-intercept at 0 and 1 over 9. Now analyzing this further here, we can see that the function is increasing from here to here. Therefore our reciprocal function will be decreasing on this interval. This will be approaching 0 from below, therefore the reciprocal function will be approaching negative infinity. Graphing the left-hand side of our g at x, we get... Again, as my f at x approaches 0 from below, the reciprocal function will then approach negative infinity. And as my function f at x is tending towards negative infinity, the reciprocal function will tend towards 0. Again, below the x-axis because your function f at x is also negative there. Let's now take a look at our function g at x from the right-hand side, and we'll deal with the middle at the end. So again, same situation here. You can see that our function is decreasing. Therefore, our reciprocal function will be increasing and look as follows. And you can see here we have the same idea. My function f at x is tending towards negative infinity. Therefore, the reciprocal function will tend towards 0 from below. As my function approaches 3 from the right-hand side, we're getting to be a number very, very close to 0. And therefore, the reciprocal function will tend towards infinity. And in this case, because it's below the x-axis, it'll tend towards negative infinity. Taking care of the graph in the middle here, we can see the function is increasing. Therefore, our reciprocal function will be decreasing until we hit our y-intercept. Continuing on here, we see our original function is decreasing. Therefore, our reciprocal function will be increasing. And we have here uh, g at x graphed in red. This is the reciprocal function, 1 over 9 minus x squared. Let's examine where the function g at x and f at x intersect. Again, doing some quick math here, we equated f at x and g at x, and go ahead and solve, I end up getting plus or minus root 10 and plus or minus root of 8. So you can see here, these are the plus or minus root of 8 intersection points, and we have here the plus or minus root of 10 uh, intersection points. So again, doing the same strategy as the example before, we can still analyze uh, where these function and its reciprocal intersect. Again, to draw similarities between our function and the reciprocal, Notice my original function is increasing until we hit 0, and our reciprocal function is decreasing until we approach 0. Then my function f at x is decreasing from 0 to infinity, and my reciprocal function is increasing from 0 to infinity. Notice here our original function f at x had roots at plus or minus 3. Therefore, our reciprocal function had vertical asymptotes at plus or minus 3. Our reciprocal function had a y-intercept at 1 over 9, whereas our function f at x had a y-intercept at 9. All right, let's take a look at another example. In the final example here, same idea. We want to graph this function. What you want to do first is you want to express this bottom function in quadratic form. Doing so, we get... Finding our vertex here, we have a vertex at uh, negative 1 and 4, and therefore our function f at x expressed in vertex form is as follows. 
So therefore, we're going to first graph our function f at x. Doing so, we get. So I have a quick graph here of our function f at x. And again, we want to graph the reciprocal of this function here. Uh, as you saw before, to be able to find the reciprocal function, we have to find the roots of our original function f at x. So what I did over here was I set my function equal to 0, f at x, and solving for your roots. So now here we have our vertical asymptotes at 3 and negative 1. So again, doing the same thing here, we see our function is increasing. Therefore, our reciprocal function will be decreasing and look as follows. Likewise, on the outer right-hand side of our function, our function here is decreasing. Therefore, our reciprocal function will be increasing. And within the middle of the graph here, we can see our function is increasing. Therefore, our reciprocal function will be decreasing. Uh, notice here our y-intercept here is equal to 3. Therefore, the reciprocal will be at a third. And then our function here is decreasing. Therefore, the reciprocal will be increasing. So again, uh, same sort of idea as in example number 2. We just had to put the function in uh, vertex form and then do a little more work to find the roots. But once you find all those things, it's essentially the same. You have your vertical asymptotes now, which was once the roots. Right? Our original function f at x had roots at 3 and negative 1, and now we have vertical asymptotes at those values. Our function our f at x was increasing until 0. Now the function is decreasing until we hit 0. Then the function became decreasing from 0 to infinity, and our reciprocal function became an increasing function from 0 to infinity, again excluding the uh, vertical asymptotes. All right, that concludes today's lesson on graphing reciprocal functions. Thank you.